Here is another garage with a loft video. So we have a garage underneath, two car garage, and then a loft or area above where someone might be able to live. And I'm not going to go over every part of the design or construction because I have plenty of other videos, including another video with this design here for the lower area. So you can always check out some of our other videos that are on the playlist. I will have a link to that playlist in the video description box or in the video at the end of the video. And of course, this video was inspired by one of our viewers who needed a little more information on the sides of the gable and the shed roof. So let's go ahead and throw our back rafters in along with our side rafters. I will have a beam on this side or should I say a thicker rafter and then a double rafter on this side. I'm going to provide you with two different designs here along with two different fascia details and designs down here. So with that said, let's go ahead and start our tour of the building. So we have our shaped blocks again along with our notches for our lookouts that will support the fascia board and the block at the top will cantilever out to help support the fascia board at the top along with our double rafter here and for those of you who are familiar with my designs i won't be able to provide you with engineering or lumber sizes however i will be able to provide you with an example of how something like this can be built so here we have a rafter and i believe i have two by ten rafters down here. So this would be a 4x10 beam supported by a 4x4 post. And these walls will be the same height as the walls in the back here. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the top where the ridge beam will be supporting the roof rafters. And we will be shaping the top of both of the back rafters and the shed rafters. Next up, let's go ahead and add our front wall. We're going to have two windows, five foot wide with double trimmers. And I'm also going to provide you with two different examples on how the walls can be framed on each side. And since I'm going to have the wall set on top of the beam over here, we're only going to need one two by four here. However, on this side here, we're going to have three wall framing studs because the wall is going to attach to the side of the raptor here and not sit on top of the wall. Let's go ahead and remove the rafter so you can get a better view of the wall here. And the height of the wall will be determined by the pitch of the roof. However, you could always build a certain height wall and then calculate the roof rafters to fit that way also. So again, we can see where the top of the roof rafters are shaped over here so that they can lap with the shed rafters. And the rafter spacing is 16 inches on center. Let's go ahead and install our ridge blocks. Zoom in here, you can see where this board here goes back a little bit so that we can get some support for the fascia board. And of course, we have our notches for the lookouts that will be supporting the fascia board. And you can see here where you're not going to be able to install this rafter here until you build the wall that's going to sit on top of the roof sheathing. And I'm not about to suggest you won't be able to install it. It's just probably going to be easier to install the fascia board, roof sheathing, build your wall, and then set this rafter on top of it. So we can see here where all of the rafters are lapping and will provide us with a nice structural connection there. Next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board. Go around here where we can see all of the lookouts and the fascia board. Fascia board here is going to be 2x12. And I went ahead and made these rafters 2x12s also. Otherwise, it would have been a little lower at the ridge. And of course, we shaped the overhang so that we could use smaller fascia board in the shed roof area. Well, let's go ahead and go to the other side of the building, take a look at the fascia board here, and then take a look at the underside of the overhang here. So we're using larger fascia board, 2x12, 2x10 rafters, gives us a little gap here to provide us with what most people would refer to as a standard overhang. Take a look at the top corner over here with the fascia board. And we're simply going to attach the fascia board to the beam on this side to provide you with 
a detail that might work for your project. However, if you want an overhang, you can simply install a couple of lookouts, something that will support the overhang and the fascia board. And let's not forget that this is not the only way to build something like this. However, it is one way you can build something like that. And of course, our shaped ridge blocks, along with the lapping rafters. Again, the rafters are 16 inches on center. And after you put about 10 or 12 nails into these, you're going to have a nice structural tie there between the two rafters, the back and the front. And like I said, you're going to need to install the roof sheathing before you install the wall underneath the rafter and on top of the beam. So again, one more way to finish off this side. And this 2x4 does not need to go all the way up. You could stop it here and have the rafter sit on top of the sheathing. I just kind of drew this in as another way to do it. I think it's going to be easier to have the top plate sit on top of the sheathing and the rafter also sit on top of the sheathing and then just build a wall here. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the rafters so you can get a better idea at what the wall might look like. And again, the wall on the other side will need to be built first. This wall here can be built after you install this rafter here. And of course, you can always use building hardware framing anchors to get a better structural connection here. And those anchors would attach the bottom of the wall framing studs to the rafter. And you might need a strap to come around the corner corner here or have the framing plate lap over this wall here so that you could nail the top of that framing plate to the top of the other wall. And of course our notches for our 2x4 lookouts and the shaped bottoms of the rafter so that we don't need to use a 2x14 for the fascia board and a view of the interior here, how everything is going to finish. And even though I don't have it drawn in here, you will need a 2x4 or something to create a corner or a nailer for the drywall. The drywall that will attach to the bottom of the roof rafters. So another view of it there. Go ahead and take a look at the other side here. And even though I don't have it here, this is the board I would be referring to, to create a nailer, something that you can attach the drywall to. Otherwise, your drywall is just going to be floating there. And I'm not about to suggest you won't be able to finish the drywall, but you could end up with some cracks later. Let's go ahead and start wrapping the video up by installing the shed roof fascia board. And don't forget to leave a gap, something that you'll be able to slip the roofing under, if that is how you are going to finish the roof there. And of course, a nice view of our low sloping shed roof. I think I have a one inch per foot or a 1 to 12 ratio for our roof pitch. And let's not forget that your roof pitch for the shed for the other part of the building can be different. It does not need to be the same as mine. And a view of how the sheathing might work out here if this section of the sheathing is installed before this section of the sheathing. And as always, if you learn something, let us know either in the comment area or by hitting the thumbs up button. And of course, any questions you have, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.